My name is William Sandell. I've been an art director, production designer for almost 40 years, longer than 40 years in the film business. I've done probably 80 movies, I can't even remember. I've won the British Academy Award for Master and Commander with Russell Crowe. I've been nominated for Academy Award here. I've done uh, Perfect Storm, was a great film from the best-selling book. Flintstones, Dr. Doolittle. Uh, I cut my teeth years ago on movies such as Robocop, Piranha, Total Recall. So I've spent a good part of my life designing. Uh, it's the name you see in the beginning of the picture that no one knows who the heck that person is. But that's me, I'm a production designer. <laughs> and trying to get back to my artistic roots, designing the pieces that were so much fun and of interest to me when I was in my early 20s. And I was quite successful in those days, selling everything I could make as fast as I could make it to various collectors around town here and across the country. I think a pivotal moment in my young life was when my parents took me to a big show at the LA County Art Museum of the art of the 60s. I saw for the first time artwork that wasn't just a painting or just a sculpture or just a piece of pottery. I, I saw Ed Keenholz's work. I saw Klaus Oldenburg's work. Rauschenberg's were there. And I realized, oh, art doesn't have to be a print or a painting or a photograph. Art can be multidimensional. And I think it stuck with me all these years. I was content building my sculptures and I started to sell them to producers and directors at Warner Brothers. And they started to sort of seduce me away from my art into uh, set designing in the motion picture industry. They were big sets, they were million dollar sets, but they really were just like the kinetic boxes I was building as a young man. I have an idea of what I want the sculpture to say. And I, I'm an inveterate junk collector and I have shelves and shelves of gears and doll's heads and pulleys and all kinds of stuff to do what my vision is. I sometimes start with an idea of what I want to showcase, a movement that might be interesting to me. And sometimes I just let it happen and just start filling the space with shapes that are of interest to me. And even static, I'm hoping that they're pleasing. I use a lot of found objects, but I manufacture a lot of what I put in there. I don't want them to be just a bunch of found objects that I made move. I'm hoping that they look like they're moving to produce some effect, which I find kind of important to the pieces. I like the pieces to be standalone pieces where they look like they've been made for a particular purpose. That purpose perhaps unknown to the viewer, but a piece of working whatever that somebody made for whatever reason to function somehow, perhaps as a gambling machine, perhaps as a showcase or a marquette to show kinetic energy, but I want it to look like it has a purpose. I've always wanted the pieces to have a nostalgic feel, a certain circus or carny feel. Like most kids, I wanted to run away to the circus. I've always liked going to carnivals when they had a midway, when they had a freak show, when they had all of this. A world that I find artistically very interesting. And I've kind of designed my pieces to look like they might be a traveling piece of equipment that traveled with the carny, that was set up to showcase something or hustle some money from the suckers. I spent a lot of time on the paint. They're multi-painted, multi-layered, aged, weathered, to try to give a feel of the maintenance that went on with these pieces as they traveled from town to town. I'm enamored of the colors that were used in the circuses. I'm in love with the vibe that a carny or a circus has. I like to think that these pieces were built and maintained by somebody that wasn't an artist, that they were built by somebody that was building a practical piece of machinery, that it's been kept up by the kid in the circus that could use a paintbrush the best, so the painting isn't refined at all. The color selection perhaps isn't refined sometimes, but that it looks like what I strive for, a piece of machine that was built for God knows what reason. <laughs> With the show coming up at the Manhattan Beach Gallery with Cinda Valley, her paintings immerse you in the painting. There, there's a great sense of depth. And to use the term from the, from the gallery, they're very cinematic, I feel. 